Mathematics is usually considered a pretty hard science where there isn't too much gray area. Indeed, it may go out of its way more than any other discipline to identify and eliminate its own ambiguities. But that doesn't mean there's never any controversy. Probably the greatest controversy in mathematics that someone as uninformed as I knows about is called the axiom of choice. This mathematical thought is considered controversial because it makes intuitive sense, but the use of it seems to lead to conclusions that do not make intuitive sense. However, I'm wondering if the axiom of choice is really the root problem of these nonsensical conclusions. I have something else that I would like to point the blame at. You see, when I first discovered the idea of cardinality, it made sense to me. In a finite world, if I can take all the elements of one set and match each one of those elements with exactly one other element in another set with none left over, naturally I'd have to say each set has the same number of elements. And any two sets with the same number of elements would be the same size, of course. Two sets with three elements each would both have a cardinality of three. But then, when I saw the interval from 0 to 1 could be matched up with the interval from 0 to 2 in this manner, I started having some issues. I said, wait a minute, 0 to 1 can't be as big as 0 to 2 since one of the intervals is contained within the other. So I thought about this problem for years, and although I never could find a way to deny this 1 to 1 cardinality pairing between the two sets, I was at least able to show on a previous YouTube video that 0 to 2 could be paired up in such a way with 0 to 1 that one set has twice as many elements as the other with no overlapping or underlapping. Not only was I able to show through the matching of elements that 0 to 2 could be twice as big as 0 to 1, but using the same method, I'm sure I can show that it can be four times as big six times as big, etc. In fact, I would go so far as to say, by element matching, I can show that either one of the intervals can be an arbitrary, finite number of times bigger than the other. I might have already explained this in my previous video. Anyway, the analysis brings me back to the original question that cardinality was designed to answer. Which set is bigger? I came to the conclusion that I cannot tell which interval is bigger or if they're the same size by this matching business. There are too many different ways to match them and none of the matchings have any credibility over the other matchings. So now I have the idea that the axiom of choice is not the actual culprit behind the controversial non-intuitive mathematical results in set theory. I think it's the very core of cardinality's definition that's the real culprit. One-to-one -one element matching just doesn't work with infinite sets. Someone may be able to show that 0 to 2 is equivalent to 0 to 1 by one-to-one -one surjective matching. But I can show that 0 to 2 is bigger than 0 to 1 by two-to-one surjective matching. And by saying 0 to 2 contains every element that 0 to 1 contains, plus additional elements that 0 to 1 does not contain. So I have two arguments to the other person's one argument. Does it mean we're both right and I'm righter? Does it mean I'm right and the other person is wrong? I have no idea, but I would strongly suggest that we no longer use matching to compare the sizes of infinite sets. Infinite set element matching is the real controversy of set theory, and the axiom of choice is either equivalent to this idea, or it's some sort of byproduct. I'm not educated enough to know.